Um, I usually carry mine on a keychain. So <clears throat> I hope you guys noticed this. This was in your participant kit. And um, this key is essentially a security key that can be used to log into your computer uh, to any website. It's, uh, it's, it's a fairly versatile key. It does a lot of things. And it's, mo it's mostly used for two-factor auth. So if you've used two-factor auth, you know what uh, I'm talking about. Um, if you are a serious user of two-factor auth like me, you'll have a lot of things registered on your phone. These things are, first of all, a pain to find. You know, um, I have so many services registered that I have to look around and see which one do I want to use right now. And one of the major disadvantages of two-factor keys is they are vulnerable to phishing attacks. When you type in a two-factor code, how do you know you're typing it into the website where it belongs? If it's in the browser, you can see the URL. If it's an embedded app, can you see the URL? You can't. Okay? And this key was specifically designed to get around the problem because this is a key that only works if your browser supports it. Uh, at the moment, the only browser that supports it is Chrome. Others are getting support soon. So um, just to make sure I have pages loaded. I just loaded all of them before uh, getting on stage here. This is the product website for the YubiKey thing. It's uh, designed by something called the Fido Alliance. Um, Fido makes multiple standards for security. The specific standard we are looking at is called, it's called the U2F standard. Now, the YubiKey itself um, predates Fido, so it's got a lot more functionality than what Fido demands. Um, you get this app called the YubiKey Manager, which um, shows you what functionality this device is capable of. Um, sorry, it's a little small there, but essentially, the more it supports, it's got three different features. It's got an OTP feature, a CCID feature, and a YouTube feature. Um, I'll show you some of these things one by one. The OTP thing is the oldest functionality. It's uh, essentially where the company comes from. Um, most of you will not be using this regularly, uh, although you can if you want to. CCID is something a little more complicated. I'll get to it. U2F is the standard that you need. So now what you've got here is to start using this, if you're using Google, you can do this. Um, go to your account settings. If you go to my account, you get to this page. Uh, get down into sign-in and security. It'll come back. So, OK, it doesn't like this page. Um, once you get into sign-in and security, you know, two-step verification where you turn it on, uh, get into this area. You get either support for the authenticator app, or you can use the security key. OK, so this is where you do this. You plug this in and add it as a security key. I've already added mine. Um, you can do this on GitHub as well. On the GitHub website, go to your account settings. Under settings, you'll have security. Under security, you'll have two-factor authentication. Once you enable this, um, you get to add security keys here. It's fairly simple. You plug this in, give it a name, uh, put in the key, and you tap the button. Now, I'm going to show you how it works. So I have here an incognito window. I'm going to try logging back into Google. So what I'll do is select my account, say next. Hopefully the internet works, and it does. Uh, you set your password as usual. And the next thing it's going to ask you is, could you please now put in your security key to confirm that um, this account belongs to you? Normally, you would get a two-factor authentication code pop up out here. Um, in this case, it does both. So just so that you can see this again, uh, let's put this on screen. So what I'm going to do is plug this into my USB port. Um, as you can see, it lights up once it happens. There's a little blinking there. I just have to tap this once, and oops, it timed out. Uh, let's get that page back again. While it's happening, let's try GitHub. GitHub gives you the same prompt. Uh, like everybody else, I also save my password, which makes my browser completely insecure. But because I have a key, I can do this. And uh, there you go, two-factor auth done. No code required. Same thing here. Press this once, and it locks me in. Hopefully, this page is not timed out again. Uh, looks like Google's timed out. OK. So this is it's as simple as this. You know, Just plug it in, tap it once with your finger, and you're on. Um, the part that gets interesting is the CCID mode that I just described. Um, how many of you use GPG? What do you use GPG for? Do you sign keys? Do you sign packages when you release them? 
Um, this device supports GPG. It's uh, it lets you put a GPG private key on the device. Now the one that you've got is a more advanced version. It's capable of supporting 4,096-bit keys. The one that I have here is the last generation. It's only 2,048-bit keys. Um, so to give you an example of how this works, if I do GPG2, it's saying it's going to tell me that it's got an error because it can't find a card. Uh, I just have to plug this in. Since I've already set it up, when I do this, it's going to tell me that it's found a card, it's got keys on them, these are the secret keys that are on the device, they're not on my computer. So you steal my laptop, you're not going to get my GPG key, it's only on the device. The device is write only, you can't read a key back from it, all encryption happens on the device. And so uh, I just made a simple file here to show you how to do this, it's just a simple text message, you want to sign this, you're going to say, ASCII armor signature, hello uh, TXT. I'm going to get a prompt for the pin. This is the pin that you store on the device saying that this is what you're going to use as a shortcode for typing out stuff. And there you go, I have a signature. Signed by the key, no, not by my computer. So now obviously I take this off, all of this stuff stops working. So what you've got here now is something that behaves like an actual key in the sense that the computation is happening on this device. Um, one of the common things that happens when you use USB based security is that as some of you may know, USB is dangerously insecure because USB firmware can be overwritten on most devices. Uh, USB firmware also runs on your computer when you plug it in and it's capable of crashing your computer if you have bad firmware. Uh, there's bad USB that's a well-known exploit. One of the things that uh, YubiKeys are designed to ensure this does not happen is that they are, they are read-only. Um, the firmware on a YubiKey cannot be replaced, it cannot be upgraded. It is essentially just burned into the chip. The GPG part of this thing is write-only. You can write a key into it, you can't read it back from it. Uh, the security is designed to ensure that you can never get data off the device. And um, the Fido U2F standard is something that comes in from the browser. So in fact, um, you can find this in the Can I Use page. It's called U2F standard. Right now, Chrome is only one to support it. Uh, Microsoft Edge will support it in the next one or two versions. Um, Firefox intends to support it. They have a track ticket open for it. Uh, it's not clear when they will do it. Safari at the point has no plans, but Chrome has full support and Chrome for Android also is getting support. Uh, in fact, Chrome for Android also supports uh, the wireless version of U2F, so obviously you don't have a USB port on a phone, but you do get the wireless standard and this particular key happens to be the wireless key. It's um, It's got a different icon, I don't know if you can see that, let's see if you can get it focus. Well, you can, you can see something that looks like the one of Wi-Fi icon. Um, that's because this is the NFC version of the key, it uh, can be used with the phone as well. So you just have to type it on the back of an NFC enabled phone and you log in, just like you would if you're using an authenticator code. So um, I hope you enjoy your devices and I hope you enjoy better security. So please use them, you know, set up all your accounts with this. Google supports it, GitHub supports it, Dropbox supports it. These are the things you most likely use. So set them up there, make sure your accounts are secure. Thank you.